to wrap up and in summary, a couple of things here that are really important. Um, we see carbon reduction as a business opportunity. Uh, it's all about cost saving, it's all about innovation. We think it's important that it is seen as a business opportunity. There is nothing that is uh, altruistic about what we are doing here. We are investing along with the grain of business because we believe that only business has the deep pockets, the entrepreneurial spirit, and the skill sets required to actually develop the technologies that we're going to require going forward. And therefore, at the end of the day, it has got to be business-led. And for it to be business-led, it's got to be a business opportunity. The good news is that around the world, everybody recognizes, I think, that this is a business opportunity that needs to be, therefore, couched in business terms and put forward in those terms. Um, the UK is distinctively well-placed uh, in terms of political support and academic industrial capabilities, whilst being, frankly, very small. We've got to recognize that we are very small, and some of the technology areas that we want to play in, we are going to find ourselves competing with US investment in the billions as we speak. Now, we're not going to invest by matching those billions pound for pound, dollar for dollar. We're going to invest by actually being particularly smart and focused in the way in which we exploit what are our advantages here in the UK. And they are significant, without doubt. There are some real specific challenges to low carbon innovation, uh, but there is a lot of support available from us and from other organizations. I mentioned uh, ETI and TSB. I know that here in Northern Ireland, Invest Northern Ireland, provide a lot of support uh, to innovators in this space. Um, but across the UK, there are a number of uh, sources of, of innovation support. I think all quite clearly delineated. So the good news is there's relatively little duplication. There is a very strong case to look carefully and see where you can find the support that is most relevant to your actual needs. And those specific challenges are, are very real. This issue of getting the finance right for the scale up um, is really crucial. The issue of protecting intellectual property as you go through. And maybe the one point I didn't uh, explain very clearly is this generational question. Um, go back to fuel cells. A few years back, fuel cells were the great white hope. We were gonna have a hydrogen economy. And people invested billions into fuel cells, the first generation of fuel cells. They didn't get the job done. We're now on the third generation of fuel cells. And hopefully, we're gonna get the job done. Solar PV at the moment, silicon-based PV, is very expensive. Its next generation is thin uh, film PV, which is much, much cheaper, but probably still not cheap enough for mass deployment. And we're at the moment working on a significant program with uh, Cambridge University and a parallel program with Imperial College, essentially putting together the intellectual property of those two institutions and developing it on a commercial basis uh, in organic PV, plastic semiconductors, a third generation of PV. So for a number of these technologies, it's a question of generation. So if one isn't part of the first wave, that isn't necessarily the end of the game. If one is part of the first wave, that doesn't necessarily mean that one's going to win out. Um, we do believe there's a need for more focused strategy uh, here in the UK. Uh, we simply haven't got the resources to invest right across the board. And that's politically challenging to actually focus uh, can be seen by some as picking winners, and the track record of governments around the world at picking winners is pretty poor. Um, we did some research into this, and interestingly, the reason why picking winners seems to have a bad track record is that for various political reasons in various countries, um, companies that have been supported tend to be companies in distress. So it's less a case of picking winners as shoring up the losers. Um, that isn't a recipe for success. And we believe there is a real case for moving on from that and the dogma associated with it and thinking more in terms of, and let's just focus the resource that we've got on the areas where we have advantage. And it's quite easy to work out where those areas are for a country like the UK. And lastly, uh, this is really my absolute belief. If we can get all of the above right, the UK really can be an international leader in terms of low carbon innovation and enterprise. And the translation from innovation into enterprise is the bit that we've got to get right. It is all there to go for. It's a fantastic opportunity. It's the opportunity of a lifetime. Thanks very much indeed.